Hey, Mike Bartika here. I uh, just want to give you a quick studio update based on uh, feedback that I got for uh, one of my last videos where I was asking people to uh, chime in about the look and feel of, you know, the production values of uh, my videos. And uh, got some good feedback uh, from one person in particular. Uh, one of the things that he said was definitely prop up the laptop on a TV tray as opposed to uh, on my lap because the shakiness is, you know, having the laptop on my lap is just Bush League and I really hope he wasn't referring to that Bush. So uh, in addition to that, uh, also said change the lighting, get better lighting. And uh, I'm not sure how it's going to look, but I did replace a light bulb that was uh, pretty much glowed out. They don't really, they're, they're LED lights now, so they don't really burn out the way that they used to. They just kind of decrease in glow until, you know, you're, you just realize one day that you open up a book and you can't see. Um, and I was actually experiencing that somewhat in the, over the last uh, few weeks, but I was just too lazy to get up there and do it. So uh, somebody mentioned, you know, improve the lighting. So now hopefully the lighting's improved some. Now the camera does its own auto adjusting when I bring it up. So maybe, maybe it will, maybe it won't. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. I don't have any fancy camera or video uh, editing software that, that I'm using. This is just straight up Microsoft camera comes with it. Um, I'm, I'm glad it actually was there because, uh, you know, it's funny when you get a laptop you think it's going to come with all the stuff you need, but sometimes you actually have to order extras. Like, for example, I have a Blu-ray DVD player in my laptop, and it's an Alienware laptop, so it's, so it's pretty nice. I got it back in 2013, and it still works really well. Um, it does run hot for some reason, and I don't know if that's because one of the fans is out or, or you know, if that's just the way it runs. It's actually kind of burned my leg some, that I've got some discoloration on my leg that's probably permanent because of that uh but um anyway the, the blu-ray player i thought that if you got a blu-ray player then you could automatically play blu-rays turns out that's not necessarily the case now maybe that's changed today because like i said i got this laptop like six seven years ago but when I tried to play my friend's Blu-ray disc of uh, The Walking Dead Volume 1, um, it, it wouldn't play. And I was like, why is that? And it turned out, well, it's because I didn't pay for the $60 video tools package that, uh, that I had the option to pay while, uh, or that I had the option to purchase while buying the Alienware laptop. So, you know, bummer, right? I mean, I actually paid for a laptop that has 3D capability, but it doesn't play Blu-rays. And, pff, great. Uh, but, you know, that's not something I've ever really needed, and I've rarely ever needed even the, the DVD playing uh, capability. Very, very rarely. Uh, and the last time that I actually tried to use it to burn a CD or a DVD, uh, the drive, the, the, uh, the read-write thing, the, what is it called? The drive, the DVD drive. Why do I, why do I feel like there's another name that for that that I'm missing? DVD reader, DVD drive. I don't know, uh, but it just basically crapped out, and uh, the the disc got stuck in there, and I had to look online. Got got some people online to help me uh, look for a YouTube video where it turns out there's a there's a secret to uh, these these buttonless uh, DVD things. Because if you have if you have one of these, it just kind of sucks the DVD right in. It doesn't. Uh, you don't have a, a push button. And if that's the case, if you ever need to eject that DVD and it won't eject from the software, it's stuck for some reason. Try this. Try dragging your finger from the back of the slot all the way to the front of the slot. I swear this is not like something sexual. Just do it. I mean, it, because it actually worked for me. I did that. I did. It. I, I. I think I had to feel it up like twice, and then out popped the DVD. So yeah, um, <laughs> you know, I. Uh, I found the eject button on my laptop. <laughs> if you wanna, you know, so long as we're talking about Bush League and you know all these other things, well, we may as well go with that. 
Uh, let's see. What other advice did I get on my... So it, so I talked about uh, the lighting. I talked about uh, stabilizing the laptop by just putting it on a TV tray. Uh, another thing I was saying was uh, don't have a bright white background. Well, the problem is is that this is my back wall. And, and I just don't have anything on it. And maybe, you know, if this were something that I was doing as more than a hobby, I'd put up some sort of, you know, screen in the back or something to soften things up. But... Nah, not happening. Besides, this couch is heavy and I don't want to move it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a wall in my house. You know, this is a room in my house. It's just, This is where I do most of my stuff as far as just sitting on the computer and watching TV and, you know, messing around on social media or, or even doing work when I'm working. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's probably not going to change anytime soon. Uh, the last thing was uh, lose weight. Yeah, because, you know... I'm I'm uh, I'm a bit on the heavy side, but you know it is what it is. I I actually have that on my list to do to do things because one of the things that I did a long time ago was uh, well, <laughs> it's not really one of the things I did as a hobby, but it was a hobby that you know I would have liked to pick up if I really had the time. Uh, was indoor skydiving. Uh, where I live, there is an indoor skydiving place um, about eh, I want to say about 15 minutes away from me. And I was there one time. I was there. I went there a couple of times just to watch because they'll let you just go in and watch the people doing it. And it's fascinating if you go. If you ever go, you know, if you're ever driving past one of those places, it's called iFly. And uh, if you ever want to just go inside and see what they do, they'll let you go up and watch the people doing it. And and what's great is when, you know, after they've let a team of people go through, you know, and they're of whatever, you know beginners quality or novice quality or maybe there's some more advanced one-on-one -on -one going on then they'll have a show-off minute where the one of the trainers or one of the one of the actual you know employees of the place will go and he'll do all these flying things and go flying around and it's fun to watch it really is i mean they, they do some real superman stuff in there it's it's uh it's really fascinating to watch so you you kind of go there and you're thinking oh maybe i'll get that good someday and, you know, I went there and I was like, I, I'm going to give it, I'm going to at least give it a try. And I did. And I almost came out with the, uh, the let me, let me, let me explain how it works. They suit you up and they kind of explain some of the basics. And I also watched some videos online to try and, you know, understand what some of the basics are about how to float and how to turn and how to do stuff. And, you know, your first time in the tube, the only thing you're going to try to want to do is just get yourself into a stable float if you can do that you've succeeded for for your first go around well and there's another thing that they'll do is um they'll take you up and you know spin you around and let you go really high uh that costs about 10 bucks extra and um at first i didn't i didn't pay for that because i thought you know oh if i get into this then you know i can always pay for that some other time uh i went in and it's hellishly loud because you've got these giant fans that are blowing air up at you. And there's not much to see. And I'm a very visual person. And so you get in there and you're thinking skydiving. You're thinking, oh, you know, view of the world or something. But, you know, you're in a glass tube. In a glass tube, you can look at, you know, the people who are around you. But there's really nothing else to see. You look downward and, you know, that you see the vents or something where the fan action is coming up and all the air is blowing through the net. But there's really nothing to look at. There's there's nothing out there that, you know, it's it's not a visual experience when you're doing that kind of stuff. Not, I didn't find it to be. And so I, I didn't really think that it was, you know, all that on my first time through. Uh... So I actually asked the guy, I said, you know, let, let me go ahead and pay the 10 bucks and you can take me up. And I, and I really thought that that was the last I was ever going to do of it. So so I had basically paid for a starter pack, which was two uh, one-minute trips. And the first minute, like I said, I wasn't really impressed with it. And I thought, you know, let me go ahead and pay the 10 bucks and then he can take me up in the tube and then, you know, I'll be just be done with this. So pays the 10 bucks he takes me up in the tube and i'm still not really impressed but in the last like i want to say <clears throat> 20 or 30 seconds that i had in there i actually achieved a stable float 
it actually felt like I was I wasn't sinking I wasn't rising I was just holding steady and when you get to that point it's like something clicks in your brain and I just realized oh oh this is why people do it this is why this feeling this this feeling like you are totally disconnected from gravity and everything else and I, I decided after that that I was gonna I was gonna come back at some point. So I actually I actually bought a pack of uh, ten minutes worth of additional time that I then proceeded to never go back and use again. And honestly, I don't know if I'll ever get to do it again because uh, the iFly now over by where I am is closed because of the pandemic, and I don't know if it's ever gonna reopen. Uh, it could be that it's one of those places that's permanently shut down. Uh, I, I even, you know, I know there's there's restaurants in the area that permanently shut down, but uh, th this place may have permanently shut down too. I hope that's not the case. I guess I should just go ahead and go on Google Maps and, and find out. But that'll be sad. That'll be sad if that's the case, because uh, for one thing, I'll have spent the money on those 10 additional minutes for, for nothing um, when I could have used them. But, you know, it's just, it's just kind of sad. So, anyway... So yeah, well, one of, the reason I even brought that up was because uh, the guy advised me, you know, you need to lose weight. Well, I also need to lose weight. I need to lose about 20, 25 pounds if I want to go indoor skydiving again because they do have a maximum weight limit. So yeah, I know, okay? I know, I'm fat. I get it. Um, and, and it's my fault. It's totally my fault. I have not been regulating my diet the way that I should be. Um, one thing, uh, I kind of blame Kroger's. I kind of blame Kroger's because they have been pushing these dollar candies that make it, you know, even cheaper than two for a dollar for their for the normal stuff. I usually don't get chocolate or candy or something unless it's like two for a dollar. And they were pushing these candies. I don't know if it's like leftover from Halloween of last year still, but uh, just just cheap as all get out. Just so cheap that I, I just couldn't resist. I was just trying one of everything. And I still have a thing of chocolate covered raisins in the refrigerator and I'm going to, you know, plow through that. And then that's going to be the end of it. I, I've already decided it's like no more because the last time I got on the scale, I was like, damn, that's the most I've ever weighed. This is ridiculous. I can't, I can't keep doing this. So, uh, so yeah, losing weight, losing weight will help. Um, beyond that though, uh, doing good so far. Uh, so far, don't think, um, yeah, at some point I'm going to get a new laptop, and hopefully the laptop will be quieter. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's kind of a, a steady fan whirring in the background, and, you know, it is what it is. <coughs> the other thing that I'm noticing now that I'm doing, and I, I, I wonder if you've noticed it too, uh, when I'm looking at the screen, am I looking a little bit below your line of sight, as if I'm looking a little bit below your eyes? Um, because the way that the camera is positioned and the way that I can see my reflection in my own screen, which I've set to like total black, uh, cause I, I always do that. I set up a total black background so that I don't have anything reflecting off of my glasses. Um, I find myself looking into my own eyes when I'm talking, which is kind of interesting. So I'm kind of talking to myself, even though I'm, I'm really talking to all the people out there. And I should be looking straight into the camera, which is slightly above. You've got a little, there's a little, uh, you know, dot and light and, and, the, and the camera is right there. But uh, my eyes are like a little bit below that. So I don't know. I may need to adjust the camera a little more. Uh, other than that, um, I'm going to try doing my next few videos like this, see how it looks. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see where it goes from there. So anyway, I wanted to say thanks for the advice, and uh, I, uh, I hope uh, the, the next few videos and so are to your liking. So I will talk to you all later.